Sasha. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm here to share with you the story of uh, uh, the voyage to the red planet. began in 1963 with the first uh, launch uh, which was in uh, which happened in Tumba and uh, we've come a long way since then and sky is the limit they say but not literally for ISRO. Uh, ISRO has been now venturing into the cosmic neighborhood but there are some who question the relevance of science in, uh, in a developing nation but as Vikram Sarabhai who is the father of uh, our space program rightly said, we must be second to none in the applications of advanced technology to the problems of mankind. Indian space program uh, has, has been shared, nurtured, and enriched over the past few decades. We are now building satellites, uh, which are remote sensing, we have communication satellites, and we have Earth observation satellites. Uh, very soon, you're all going to be using NAVIC, which is our own form of GPS. And uh, apart from that, we also have the science exploration satellites. And um, oh, we have, we are in fact having a telescope in the sky now, right now, with our latest satellite that's called the Astrosat. So now, uh, what's important is, is not just to build sophisticated satellites, but to also find very innovative uses or applications of these satellites so that we make some difference to, way, to the way we live in our day-to-day -day lives. So um, now coming back to Mars, which is the main topic today, why Mars? Is it because it's mysterious and alluring? It's so far away, but yet on a cosmic scale, very near. Would you be just happy to look at Mars from your telescope? Or for those who romanticize, would you actually think of going for a habitat in mass uh, because of our dwindling resources? As Carl Sagan said, it's not just for the survival of mankind, but for mankind surviving forever. Now, Mars tucks the human imagination like no other planet does. There are a lot of similarities between Earth and Mars, and yet it is very strikingly different. The Mars is inclined to the uh, ecliptic plane, like, almost with the same angle as the Earth is, and it has the same length of the day as we have on the Earth. It's about 24 hours. But Mars has preserved its early history, uh, whereas Earth has lost its early history because of the tectonic mo movements and the wind and the soil erosions. Now, knowing about Mars, we would probably know uh, why the Earth is what it is like it is today. And the most important question is, that everyone asks is, is there life on Mars or was there life on Mars? Are we alone in this cosmic world? Or is there someone else somewhere asking the same questions as we are today? Now, to answer some of these questions, ISRO built the Mars Orbiter mission uh, which the aim was to design and realize not just a mission to go to Mars, but to get captured on Mars's gravity and orbit around Mars. Now, this was our first interplanetary mission. It was built on a frugal budget in a very short time of realization. The challenges were communication, navigation, mission planning, and management. So now, how did it all happen? So uh, how, how come we, could, uh, we were able to achieve success, whereas 40% of the missions to Mars were not successful in the first, uh, first opportunity? So we had learned our lessons from others' mistakes. We had learned from previous Mars missions, and we had learned from our own experiences. We used what is called as heritage technology, and we did not really have the time to develop any new technology for the mission as such. So there was a lot of re-engineering and a lot of innovativeness built in, uh, in this mission. And it was proving beyond a doubt that it is logically possible to do all operations with the right planning. So we had planning and we had plan B most of the times. And for some times, some critical operations, we had a plan C also. 
and it, it, we had that capability to gear up for unplanned events. Not everything went right the very first time or as we had expected. So we had this capability to look up, to look up for solutions on the fly. So I think this was one of the most important aspects why the Mars Orbiter mission was successful in its very first attempt. And the most important thing was the teamwork. Every person in the team had played his role to perfection. And that was the reason, I, and I think that is one of the most important reasons uh, for the Mars or Orbiter mission being successful. Now coming to the trajectory, the Mars Orbiter mission had a very unique trajectory. Whereas most uh, satellites, uh, especially built by NASA, were uh, uh, were uh, uh, injected into an orbit right in right outside the Earth's sphere of influence. Uh, our own PSLV had put in the Mars orbit mission right into the Earth's orbit. So we had to do multiple orbits around the Earth to gain the velocity to escape from the sphere of influence of the Earth. So it was every time we came closer to the Earth, the engine would fire and then we would gain some velocity. And the sixth time we did, we fired our engine, we were out of the sphere of influence of the Earth and we were set into a trans mass trajectory as we call as a cruise. And then once we, uh, and then this mass had to travel a long way, uh, the satellite had to travel a long way to reach mass. And this is more of a rendezvous problem, wherein at a predetermined place, as Mars reached that particular point, the satellite had to reach exactly the same point at that point of time. So it had to leave the Earth's orbit with a very, very precise velocity and direction. So and, and uh, for it to get captured into the uh, sphere of influence of the mass. And then the most important burn happened at the time of the, uh, at the time when it reached closest to mass, as we, what is what we call as a mass orbit insertion burn. That is where the velocity of the spacecraft was reduced by braking. The engine was fired after nearly nine months, which was one of the most critical activity. And after that, because the velocity got reduced, the satellite got captured into the orbit of Mars. Now the satellite had to travel nearly 650 million kilometers before it reached Mars. And just to give you, you know, what kind of precision was involved, we were trying to target a pillbox of about 50 kilometers from a distance of 225 kilometers. So at the point of uh, Mars orbit insertion, the satellite was 250 kilometers away from the ground station. So just to give you, you know, to scale it down for you, what it means is, like, you say you are hitting a bullseye on a dartboard here, but it's just that the dartboard isn't here in this room, but it's on the other side of the world. So that was a kind of precision that was involved. Now, uh, another important factor was the use of the onboard computers and uh, what we call as an autonomy. Say I say a hi, and you say, you reply to me, and you hear that hi after 20 minutes. And then when you reply, I hear that after another 20 minutes. So what kind of conversation we could have, you know, with this kind of a delay. So in order to overcome these delays, most of this, uh, uh, the processes were built on board and uh, the satellite was capable of taking its own decisions, not only in case of a routine operation, but also in case of a failure. So in case uh, one of the element of the satellite failed, it would normally reboot, like how you reboot your PCs, it would reboot it itself and then it would, uh, and even then if it did not work, we always had backup systems which would come on and do the job. So this kind of autonomy was built in the satellite. So now for the command to reach the satellite from a distance of 225 million kilometers, we had to have a very, very highly sensitive receiver. Now, what, what it meant was, just to give you an, another analogy here, you know, suppose you're in a stadium watching a cricket match, and happens to be an India Pakistan cricket match, and Virat Kohli is just hit a six. And say there are two people whispering in one part of the stadium, and you're trying to pick up that whisper from diagonally across the stadium. So you know, the receiver had to be that sensitive to pick up the signal from the earth at that distance. Now to make things even much more worse, all the objects, the Mars, the satellite, and the Earth itself were constantly in motion, and they could, 
actually obscure each other. And at times, when the sun comes in between the Earth and the Mars, we will not be able to send a, a command or receive any telemetry from the satellite for about 15 days. So it's for such a long time, the satellite needs to take care of itself without any intervention from the ground. So all this was built in the onboard computer uh, for the first time in the Mars Orbital Mission. Now, uh, now having built the satellite, it not only was taking pictures and got us data from Mars as such, we were also able to look at the moons of Mars, which are called, which are called Phobos and Deimos. And uh, uh, we've taken a number of pictures, and many of these pictures were taken for the first time by any of the uh, satellites so far. And then, just as we uh, encountered and just as we had reached Mars, a once in a 8 million year mind-blowing comet encounter took place. So uh, this, there was this comet called Comet Siding Spring, which came just from outside the solar system from the Oort uh, Oort cloud, very close to Mars, uh, on the, in very, very, very quickly after we had got into uh, close to Mars. So not only we had to duck behind Mars to get avoid uh, getting hit by the comet shower, we also had we also got an opportunity to take pictures of this comet as it went past Mars. So uh, this was another amazing thing which we hadn't really planned for, but happened, and we could successfully overcome this uh, comet uh, siding spring encounter. So this is one of the pictures that was taken by Mars. Uh, the speciality of this picture is that this was the first time any satellite had taken a picture of the Mars in one full frame. So in a single camera frame, we were able to capture the entire Mars disk and it was very, very unique to ISRO alone. Thank you. I hope to have tingled your curiosity in space sciences a little bit. Thank you so much.